حيث يقول سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا He is calling us يا أيها الذين آمنوا What you want from us O our Lord اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Fear Allah عز وجل as he deserve to be feared and try to die not out of state of لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله That's why today inshallah I will try to talk about one of the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 177 talking about something we should achieve in our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and absolutely the reflection of this will be the influence of my relation with myself how I should build this relation between me and myself to be clear, to be straight, to be always one person it's me with the Muslims, with the non-Muslims, in the masjid, in the office with my wife, with my kids, with my partners, etc, etc I am who I am that's how when I go to sleep at the end of the day with this kind of intention I will sleep with no worry I will sleep deeply because I feel peace I feel that I am straight I hide nothing I owe nothing to anyone I am satisfied the satisfaction is the thing that we in this life look after to achieve a rida I want to be satisfied from my myself first and the, the, the community around me and the best people I have to worry about and to be cared about is those that I live with or I work with or I deal with in a daily basis this ayah ayah number 177 قال تعالى ليس البر أن تولوا وجوهكم قبل المشرق والمغرب ولكن البر من آمن بالله والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال على حبه ذو القربة واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل والسائلين وفي الرقاب وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والموفون بعهدهم إذا عاهدوا والصابرين في البأساء والضراء وحين البأس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون البر in Arabic language goes for to, to create a clear image for yourself in front of yourself I'm a clear that's why the verb Barra ya burru means to choose the pure thing and to put it in a side and the unpure to the other side because the unpure will affect the pure things down to the road that's how in your relation with the people you have to pick who should be my friend who should enter my house and enter my heart after that or enter my mind I have to choose those who feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those that they have the same character the same image of me they love Allah and they love to leave this dunya with a pure intention a pure heart clean and a clear heart as Allah mentioned in the Quran إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ except those who go to Allah with a pure heart this khutbah and this ayah is the dalil the guidance to to go to that level to approach that level to achieve this level how can i be from al-abrar because you read in the quran that al-abrar in al-abrara lafi na'im al-abrar they will be in the luxury life in the day of judgment so i want to be among them if i can't means I'm a failure I wanna achieve I wanna pass I wanna go to the Jannah I'm not wasting my 100 years here or 80 or 70 or etc just wasting my my life and my time 
to end up in the fire, to end up not with Al-Abrar. I will not do that. And you should not accept anybody to affect your life and to take you back to the black side of this life. No, I want to be, inshallah, in the green side. I want to be from those that Allah Azza wa Jal will welcome them in the day of judgment. I want to be from those that Allah will send the angels to escort them to Al-Jannat, from the gates of the Jannat, insha'Allah ta'ala. So, key number one in this ayah, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ the, the bird is not to turn your face to the west or to the east. And the west and east here, Mashriq Maghrib goes for the loyalty for the humans. Don't attach your heart with the humans. Don't attach your heart or your intention with people. You have to attach your heart and your mind with the principles. Even Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a human being. We follow him because he is the Prophet. Not because he is Muhammad ibn Abdullah. Not because he is Arabs. Not because he is, for example, same color of me. No, we attached ourselves with the principles, the faith. That's why Allah says, don't turn your face right or left. And to be proud of this, I am from this country, or I am from this tribe, or I am, I am rich, I'm a businessman. No, don't do that. Key number one, to reach the level of birr, to be pure, clear, straight, the following. He says, وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ But the birr is the following. Number one, مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ so key number one, to be from Al-Abrar, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Full faith, full iman. And the full iman and the complete iman, something we have to keep working on it up to death. You know why? Because it's like a building. You keep build and build and build and raise it and raise it, and raise it. There is no end when you raise your faith. So you have to keep working on your faith up to the last moment of your life. God said in the Quran, وَعَبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ You keep worshipping your Lord until you die. So, to believe in God is not something you can go to Walmart and buy it. I need to buy item called faith in God. I buy it, I put it in my pocket, so I am a mu'min now. No, this is not the way. I have to work hard. I have to work hard to keep build my trust, my faith, to reach the level of al-abrar, insha'Allah ta'ala. So to believe in God, number two, and in the day of judgment. The reason that you are here in this time, coming to pray Jum'ah, because you believe in the Day of Judgment. Otherwise, if there is no question, I would not come. If there is no hisab, why I want to be straight? You are, as Muslims, the unique nation, believe clearly in the Day of Judgment. That's why I have the discipline among myself. I don't want a camera to be outside so I will be straight because of the camera. No, as a mu'min, in this religion, I'm straight because I watch my God. I observe Him. I believe in Him. And I believe that I am going to meet Him, me and Him. And He will ask me. So I have to prepare my answers. That's why to believe in the Day of Judgment is part of your faith. That's why I have to teach my sons, my daughters, my kids, my new generation in this community here. These kind of principles. You as a parents, this is your duty. Not just to feed them. Not to prepare the house for them and a good car and a good fun time. It's part of your life, but not all your duty as a parent. You have to, to plan the faith 
inside their hearts. It's our duty and it's very important because in this country, as we know, religion is not being taught in the schools. So you, you have to take this responsibility. So to believe in God and in the day of judgment, this is the first key. I will not go with the rest of the, uh, uh, the pillars of the faith because of the time, but you know that the rest. To believe in Allah is the key to be from Al-Abrar, to be from the chosen people. The chosen people is not something you have it by race. No, chosen people, something you have it by working hard. By trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be yourself. And to observe him and to watch him and to fear him. Number two, he said, وَآتَ mal. Key number one, the iman. Key number two, to practice something, to prove to him that you are what? A believer. You, you have faith, you trust him. He says, وَآتَ mal. In Arabic language, we have verb ata. And we have the verb ata. Ata means he came. Ata means he gave. So we are not talking about the same meaning. Wa'ata al-mal. He gave the money. Gave the money to whom? Because the money that I have it in my hand, you know, and we know all, it's not belong to us. It's from him. All my money belong to God. 2.5% of my money, that it's all from God, it's the right of the needy. The right of the people that they are in need, the poor, the miskeen, those who are in need. So part of my giving is an obligation, which is the zakah. More than the zakah is sadaqat. It's khayrat. It's barakat. It's the key. Number two, to reach the level of birr. To be from the chosen people. I have to give from what Allah gave me. I have to share from what Allah gave me and provided me. To whom, oh my Allah, you want me to give? He counted those by order. He said, Yes, we love the money. We love the wealth. We love what we have. That's why when you give, give, give from what you love, not from what you want to put it in the dumpster. A sadaqah has to be from the good money that you have, the good items. Because your sadaqah, you put it in the hand of Allah before the hand of the poor or the miskeen or the faqir. وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ Number one, ذَوِ الْقُرْبَىٰ Your relatives first. Your relatives. And among your relatives, your parents. Your parents, number one, your mama and your daddy. If they are in need, it's my obligation to keep them surviving. And this is part of your, your, your duty toward them in return of what they did to you in this life. Am I right? So, وَآتَ المال. Number one, ذوي القربة. Number two, he says, وَآتَ المال. ذوي القربة. واليتامى, the orphans. والمساكين, those that they, are, they have no income or almost no income. وَإِبْنَ السَّبِيلِ, the one had, he's traveling and he lost his money or somebody stole his money. He's in need in your country. In his country, maybe he's rich, but now he's in need. We have to help him. والسائلين, those who, who beg you to give them. After you ask about his, his status, which is the slaves in the past, no slaves anymore. So giving the money, key number two, to reach the level of birr. It's not just I want to say, I am good. No, you have to prove that you are good. I'm okay. You have to prove that you are okay. By what? Giving. So key number three, he says, وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَةِ وَآتَ الزَّكَةِ Your salah, your prayer. It's a meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that why you have to prepare yourself to this meeting. When you have any conference meeting in your job here, in my life here, 
I will go dressed good, on time, prepared myself, concentrate with the meeting, with, with appointment. That's how you do with the meetings of the people. Same thing when you come to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to perfect this meeting as much as you can. That's why Allah says, وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةِ He did not say, He prayed, or He prayed, or He prays, or praying. He says, وَأَقَامَ What's the iqama? To build, to establish, to perfect your salah. That's why you have to have the, the right dress, the pure intention, uh, the mind is clear and you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with love because if you do this you will feel comfort you will feel the peaceful the happiness while you are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's why don't pray if you are hungry don't pray if you are in a hurry don't pray if you are dirty go and clean yourself be ready come down and establish your salah with khushu be humble between the hand of Allah then when you raise your hand to Allah and ask Him, you ask Him from your deep heart, not from your tongue. That's why you have to put time for your salah. Especially if you pray by yourself in the house, try to make it as much as you can perfect. Try to make it as a project. And you want to submit this project to Allah to accept from you, to check it's been acceptable. So I have to be what? Uh, make sure I'm doing everything, inshaAllah, I can to make it perfect. So, uh, وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ As zakah, as I said, it's not my money, it's his money, her money. The 2.5% of your money. So, key number three, salah and zakah. What about siyam and hajj? It's including, if you pray, you will fast. If you fast and pray, and you give your zakah, you will go to hajj. No doubt about that. But the opposite is not correct. Not all those who fast Ramadan pray their salawat. So that's why Allah mentioned salah, zakah, inshallah. Key number four, he says, وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا عَهَدُوا What's the ahd? The covenant. The promise. As Muslim, if you want to be from those, that they reach the level of bir, you have to fulfill your covenant, your promises. When you promise, fulfill. You can't go to the appointment, call, apologize, respect others' time. Treat the people as you love them to treat you. And from the mistakes that I feel, we have this kind of lack in our community. When somebody took money from you as a loan, we have this problem. Before he got the money, he will call you maybe 20 times a day. I need money, I need money, I need money. Please help me, help me, help me. Okay, here is the money. When the due time come to return the money back to you, you start calling him and he will not even answer your phone call. Why you do this? Indirectly, you drive me not to help any other people in the future because of your attitude. This is not the sign of faith. The sign of faith to, to answer my phone call or to call me before I call you. Brother, I know the due time is tomorrow, but please, I'm still in, behind. Can you give me more time? I will respect this. And maybe I will give you up. Hey, 50% off. Give me 50% and I, I forgive you with the, with the rest of the money. But don't lie. Don't escape from your covenant, your promises. That's how you have to be straight and clear. As I said in the beginning of the khutbah, Al-Bir, the chosen people, they will not lie. They will not break their promises. When you promise your wife, fulfill. When you, you promise your husband, fulfill. Under any condition, fulfill. When you say something to your kids, well, because you are teaching them how to be what? Honest, fulfill with them. That's how we as Muslim Ummah, we have to be unique Ummah. Because our faith is unique, our religion is unique. If you practice it in a wrong way, you lose it twice. You lose yourself and you lose the example for others. Maybe because of your attitude, the bad one. Others will leave Islam because of you. Imagine, instead of being a reason that people will come to Allah, 
because of you, you will be the reason that people will leave Allah because of you. Imagine, it's a big masiyah. كُونُوا مَعْ وَكُونُوا مَعَ الصَّادِقِينَ Be from those that they will be honest and sincere and serious. So Allah says, وَالْمُوفُونَ And this is in Arabic grammar, جملة اسمية. الجملة الاسمية means, it's been what? This kind of, 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 of action, it's always there. I'm always fulfilling my promises. All the time and with all the people. With Muslims and with non-Muslims. With those that I know and with those that I never knew before. I am who I am. One person. So key number four, to fulfill your promises. The next key, he says, وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ الصَّبْرِ Key number five, to be from Al-Abrar, to practice as sabr because you can't change everybody as you wish. You can't find everything perfect as you want. Life, it's up and down. Not always to my side. Sometimes to my side. Sometimes against my side. So what I have to do? I have to have sabr. Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, he said one hadith, very beautiful hadith. He says, I'm astonished. To the status of the believer, the status of the mu'min, his matter always khair for him. Always he will give the khair out of any reaction to any action. If he has something good, he will be shakir. And this will be good for him. If Allah gave you something good, if you achieve something good, what you have to say? Don't say, I make it. Don't say I, it's not you, it's him. Say God gave me. For example, you have a store and you make a thousand dollars a day. Don't say I made a thousand dollars today. If you say I, show me that you can make it tomorrow. No, say Allah gave me today a thousand dollars. Alhamdulillah. So if, if something good happened to you, what you have to say? Shukr. And when you do more shukr, Allah will keep the blessing. And multiply the blessing. When you do shukr, the ni'am will stay. And Allah will multiply it. Then he says, وَإِنْ أَصَبَتْهُ سَرَّاءِ Shakar. وَإِنْ أَصَبَتْهُ دَرَّاءِ Sabar. If something not good happened to you, and this is normal. We've been told. We've been told in the Quran that Allah created us in this life in a hardship. So I am what? That the expectation that I have, I will have hardship in my life. No big deal. I will not ask for it. But if it, if it happened, if it happened, what I have to do? Sabr. I will have the patient. I will not flip upside down and start accusing Allah. Why me? Some people, they start accusing Allah and claiming to, hey, why you choose me to be in this problem? Don't ask Allah why, but ask Him to support you if you have something like that. You lost, for example, a life of a father, or a brother, or a sister, or a cousin, or a son, or a daughter. You lost business. No big deal. Alhamdulillah. It's not easy, I know. But at the end, this life is temporary. We are here not to stay, to, to leave. This is my test. This is my exam. I will handle it, inshallah, with the help of Him, with the support of Him. So I will practice the sabr. وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ الْبَأْسِ means here, when some, if you have a state of war. If we have, for example, like the Muslim country these days, we have the oppressors over there. They wrong the communities. Ya Rabb, if I can't change it, I will have sabr, inshaAllah. Because Allah, when He sees you have sabr, he will change the situation, insha'Allah ta'ala. But don't, don't flip against Allah Azza wa Jal. وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ So key number six, as-sabr. And as we know in the Arabic examples, he says, as-sabru muftahu al-faraj. Patient is the key of what? The solutions, the easy. 
the victory, the happiness, insha'Allah ta'ala. So when he finished the ayah, he says, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا Those that they have those keys with them, they are the honest people. And I will raise them to be from Al-Abrar. And those are the real muttaqeen. The real muttaqeen. Those who feared Allah really. After they approach that level of birth, they will be insha'Allah as Allah mentions a lot of times in the Quran. Inna al-abrara lafi na'im. Al-abrar, they will be an na'im. What's an na'im? The luxury life in the day of judgment. You have to, insha'Allah, achieve that level sooner or later. Put it as a project for you. I said always to your brothers here and in other places, the good teacher, the one who will transfer the theory <coughs> that he taught to projects. So we can what? Major it. We can practice it on the ground. So your homework, your project is to practice those keys in your life to be from Al-Abrar insha'Allah ta'ala so you'll be the winner in the day of judgment. Try to review this ayah. <coughs> ayah number 177 from Surah Al-Baqarah. Try to learn it more. Try to memorize it insha'Allah and the most important to apply it in your life. Then don't forget to teach your kids about it because this is very important. If you don't do it, nobody will do it. I ask Allah for all of you to be from those that they will listen and they will follow the best of what they listen. Ameen, ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum.